Hello, everybody. Good afternoon and happy Wednesday. My name is Leigh Bella Ralston on behalf of Faber Castell USA and Michael Stores. Would like to welcome everybody and would like to thank everyone for being here this afternoon and joining us, spending some time creating and playing and learning today. Uh, we have another fun hour of learning. It's Wednesday and I am super excited because summer is here. I can definitely feel it. So hello, everybody. Thank you for sharing where everyone is joining us from. We have some good friends joining today. We have some familiar names. Hello, Paula from Indiana. We have Marisha. We have friends from Montreal. Hi, Alex. Hello there from North Carolina. Hello, Boss Queen EJ uh, from Panama. Hi, Tina from Austin. Uh, we have some good friends from Arizona, New Jersey, some uh, Florida. Hello, everybody from Tennessee. Hello, everyone. Upstate New York, Colorado. Oh, my goodness. We have lots of friends today. So hello and good afternoon. Thank you for being here. I'm super excited today. I'm always excited, everyone. Is like, what am I talking about? This is what we love. We love to do some fun class, some fun learning, lettering. Last week, we did some lettering. So that was really fun. Today, we're going to be doing some type of illustration, some drawing. Uh, kawaii is my style of art. But again, um, I always say this, you know, just because that my style of art is kawaii, you don't have to actually um, create it as a kawaii style. Um, but that's, that's the thing. It's like you can always change it. And I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that later on. But let's talk a little bit about supplies. We'll be working with the Faber-Castell, the Albrecht Durer watercolor markers. These are watercolor markers in a marker form. I love these things because you can use it just a regular marker. Um, so this one is a dual tip. It has a brush end and it, on the other we have a, I believe this is the 2.0. So instead of a 1.5, I think this is a 2.0. So it's slightly bigger than a regular bullet tip, but I love it. So dual ended and it's water soluble. They're actually really great pigments. Now, if you don't have these markers, as always, it's okay. You can use whatever um, supply that you have in there. But what we're doing today is water coloring. So we'll be using the markers as water colors. So with that being said, I'm going to use like a um, plastic art palette like this. If you don't have it, uh, go grab a Ziploc for me, maybe have a Ziploc um, and then put a paper inside. So just, there's just a little bit form, but it's not necessary. So anything like that, that will work. So any plastic surface like that, um, if you don't have the artist palette. So I'm using a watercolor paper. This one is from Canson. Um, and then I have some water in here and then a water brush. This one's from Faber-Castell. Now you can just use a regular round brush watercolor. It doesn't matter. I'm just using this one. I love it. Um, now for simple details, what we're going to learn today is we're going to build layers using watercolors. And then we're going to use some colored pencil to kind of like um, really make our artwork pop even more. Uh, sometimes when we're using watercolor, especially if the colors are too flushed, you know, um, my favorite technique is using colored pencils on top of that. And it just brings my, my illustrations, my drawing alive. Okay, so colored pencils. So these are the Faber-Castell uh, Polychromos pencils. These are the best color pencils I've ever used. Um, not just being biased, but as an artist, this is the one that I love. It can be a little pricey, um, but this is where sometimes, you know, you get what you pay for. This is exactly it. So the colors that I'm using today, let's talk a little bit about colors again, because if you're not using the same marker, you might have different colors in there. So that's okay. I just have a beige red in here. You don't have it. I love to add, um, blush and I use it for the tongue. So beige red is my favorite color. So um, you don't have to use it. if you have a pink, if you have like a peachy tone in there, good enough. Now greens is what I have because we're drawing a turtle. We have, uh, I have earth green 172. I have may green 170. And then I have a cobalt green 156. And then I'll be using the ultramarine just for the bubbles around it for the because I love adding those bubbles all around. 
um, the colors of my pencil. Uh, instead of using um, a black liner, I'm going to be using some pencils to add some details to my turtle. So if you have like um, a lighter green that would match the green color that you have, that would work. If you have a darker green, that would be great. But if you don't, if you want to skip this part right here, feel free to do so. Um, I have indenthrine blue. I have some cobalt green, you know, a deep cobalt green. I might not use all of it, but I just have it here just in case. Um, if you want to use fine liner as your detail, then definitely I love the Pit Artist Pen. I have the Fudenosuke Hard. It's my favorite. Um, you can definitely use that to create some details, to add details in your drawings. All right. So yay, kawaii, says Patricia. <laughs> uh, the Prisma colors are really good too. That's my second one. Thank you. Oh my goodness. You know what Ilsa mentioned also my hair today. It's my husband's birthday. So I was like, okay, got to look pretty for the husband. <laughs> Hello, Felix. Hello there. Okay, so let's get started. I almost forgot to talk about our pencils. Pencils is here. Okay, so turtle. Tur what sometimes, um, the thing that I... I I am struggling with, you know, in my drawings, in my art is sometimes movement, you know? So sometimes I feel like my drawings are a little bit stiff. And so lately I have been practicing how to make them kind of like flowing a bit more than just kind of like stiff drawing. Does that make sense? Am I making sense here? I'm going to adjust my microphone. I want to make sure that I don't lose the audio. Sometimes we have that issue. So just let me know in the chat section. I'm going to pull out the chat in here. Um, so I can have it. All right. Hello there. Hi, Suzanne. Okay. All right. Pencil, pencil, pencil is our favorite. This is our best friend when we're doing, when we're doing any type of drawing or illustrations like that. Okay. Ooh, come on. All right. We um, provided a kind of like a sketch so you can trace that if you would like but this is very simple I was talking to Il Ilse about this earlier that I really want to teach you guys the basic because because then you can use these skills to kind of like draw without just drawing from you know like the handout that we provided because it's super simple we're going to start with basic simple shapes okay so we have a head we have our um a turtle shell and then we have four legs and a little bitty tail so when I say we're going to start with the basic, basic shapes, we're going to start with a basic. We're going to start an oval. We start with a head if you would like to start with a head. So a more circle-y or oval shape like that. And again, you might have issues with my sketch, but I really don't want to sketch too light, too dark, because it's going to be really hard to erase it. So let's see. All right. Can you guys see it? Is that okay? Hey, Steph, thanks for joining in. Some good friends from New York. <laughs> Connie said, I'm having a good time here. The turtle's so cute. We just started drawing circle. We'll be good here. Okay. Trouble seeing. Okay. Let me adjust again the brightness. Sometimes when I make it darker, it's easier. I really don't want to make it um, sketch too dark. Also, you don't sketch too dark because it will be really hard to erase it. I'm using a graphite pencil too. Okay, so we have one basic shape, a circle, an oval. Now we're gonna draw a half circle for this shell. We start with the half top, right? So almost like they're gonna cross each other, our circle and that curve like that. Just like that. Just two basic shapes first. And then that's it. <laughs> Just joking. <laughs> but we have a basic one. Okay, so now what we wanna do is we want from this I think mine is too small. I think that's where I'm having trouble. So you guys are having trouble seeing. So I'm going to adjust it. Let me just erase it. But I'm going to start from two shapes again. But I'm going to make it a bit bigger this time instead of too small. Okay. 
Okay, start with that. So when you're sketching, it's like, for me, everyone is different. And this is where I always share this because every artist is different. You know, they'll tell you different ways. But to me, I like seeing it as simple as possible because um, I want to see the, the basic shapes. Circle, now we have the turtle um, shell in here. Okay, how can I connect my neck to my shell? Okay, so from here, sometimes if you want to adjust your face, this is the perfect time. So I am going to add a plus inside my circle first because this is going to be the placement of my face so I want it here not in the center not too centered it's almost here where my eyes are going to be here so just kind of like a little plus in there and this will help me with the position of my face where my turtle is looking if I put I'm going to show you an example if I put my eyes over here notice that it's pointing over there, but I don't want it like that. See, notice my plus sign is here. That means both eyes are going to be on each side. This one is, ooh, see, the graphite is sometimes really hard to erase. This one, I want it to be facing us, my audience here. So this is where my eyes are going to be. This is where my cross, that's where my eyes now I want this kawaii style, so I'm going to make a kawaii mouth. It's like a big smiley face. So I have a little hump and then a letter U, just like that. It really has that big face. And then I'm going to, from here, that inner, that corner here, I'm going to bring it down. Just like that. Stephanie says, I can't see. Danielle, you got it. Don't, don't. It's okay. This is not challenging. Okay. So now that I have my mouth, I'm going to cover, just shade this to know that this is going to be dark later on. Okay. So we have the face and we have that. Now I want to connect. Now we're going to start attaching our turtle to its shell. So we're going to add some neck here. So from this side, this is our plus, right? So from here, it's gonna be very, very small. We're gonna bring this down and this one. So just imagine you're connecting a neck to the turtle. So we're just gonna add a line just like that. And that's why sometimes when there's too much sketch happening, it's hard for me to visually see it. This is what I was talking about earlier. Just like that. That's why I like to clean up my sketch. So for example, I'm done with that plus, I will erase it just because it helps me visually to see. I don't know, everyone is different. And I'm going to erase this part of the head and I just wanna see the neck. Does that make sense? So now I know how I'm going to make a bit more adjustment. I wanna bring the neck a little bit more here, this one. So I'm gonna adjust it and just bring it up just a little bit and just connect it to that first circle that we cre created. Now I'm gonna erase this line again. You don't have to, this is just me. It really does help me visually. Okay, so what are the next adjustments do I wanna do with my turtle's face? I feel like I wanna add a little bit of cheek to it because it's kawaii. Everything is like round, squishy, mushy. You know, <laughs> Everything's so cute. When you think of round and like, that it, it, you'd already immediately think about cute. And this is what Kawaii does. The simpler, it's super simple, very simple. But I want to add a little bit of cheek. So now from here, where our eyes usually, right? Eyes and then cheekbone. So a little bit below it like that. I'm going to add a little bit of home to the side, just like that. A little bit, and then I'll bring it in again. So when I talk about a little bit, really think about small changes, just small. Exactly. That's, that's kind of what I do, but it's like visually everyone's so different. You know, Marianne, I tried that. I tried kind of like, okay, I'm going to darken this original sketch that I'm doing, but sometimes really visually it helps me to just erase it. So, okay, I'm going to adjust this one. 
make it a little bit darker. I'm just going to bring this down and connect. That might help. See, I like, you know what? My response to that is I already want to erase it. <laughs> erase the other part and then clean up again. Here we go. I'm good. I like that. I added that little bit of extra cheek in there. I, I really think that it's so cute. Now, I want to add a little bit of pattern in my uh, texture in my turtle. So we're just going to add kind of like you're drawing maps, right? So just kind of like wiggly lines like this, just like that. Play around with the size. Maybe some are large, um, some are smaller, just like that. So add a little bit of pattern in there. It just add some um, extra visual and cuteness to that. Now you don't have to. I don't really like this one. I'm going to add a little bit here to its neck as well, just like that. All right, so now that we have the face, I'm <laughs> cheeky, I know, it's so cheeky. Okay. So that's our initial sketch. So you guys can see better. I'm gonna do that. Now, if you wanna add a little bit of extraness to your turtle, you can add like a little bow, um, a little star, something, but just, you know, keep adding, play around and make it your own character. So there you go. Now I'm going to add like a parenthesis like this. So, but just kind of like a slanted, it's not really like a line, almost like a letter C, but not too much. Right that. So this is where it connects to its shell. All right. Now I feel like I want to adjust this one. So you can see my sketch. I'm going to bring this down a little bit more. So it's not so high, just like that. But I'm good with this. I really like how big its head, um, more than its shell. In kawaii, it's always like that. I feel like the cuter it is, the bigger the head is. But still, it's, it has to be, it can't be like super big and it doesn't look good also. But it has to be bigger than the body. For some reason, it appears to be much more cuter. I don't know why, but it really does appear cuter. So I'm going to just make my sketch a little dark so you guys can see. All right, then you can kind of like add a little bit of shading in there to see that we're going to color that darker later. All right. It's so cute. You're so cute. All right. So we have that. Now we can add a little bit of pattern in the shell. Now this is where you have to be user imagination. You can add a little bit of scallops in there. You can add some polka dots in there. Of course, that's not the turtle really shell. You can almost just add like hexagon shapes inside, you know, um, if you want to be more traditional. But then we're thinking about kawaii. We're kind of like thinking about our own character in here. So play around. Um, you can add like um, lines. This is what I have in the sample. Just kind of like this. Adding lines to that you know, super simple. You can add kind of like a rainbow inside, um, draw a little bit of interesting and cute patterns inside. For example, just little clouds. It doesn't make sense to have clouds in a turtle's shell, but we're doing our own character. So you can definitely do that. But if you want to just add like little or polka dots, some are big, some are small, feel free to do that as well. So I'm just going to choose polka dots so we can be simple because I know we have limited time so I want to make sure that we finish this I'm going to draw circle inside so play around with your size some are just smaller some are larger than the others some may be half almost like overlapping like that just like that but I feel like this one is going to take away from the pattern that we created, but you know what, it's okay. All right, so this time I'm going to add a little bit, a big, little bitty, tiny tail. So just like this, <laughs> it's so cute already. <laughs> the spots look like blobs, yes it does. Yeah, yes it does. Okay, so we have that, it makes, reminds me also of a ladybug. I don't know why I chose polka dots, all right because it's cute. Okay, so for my 
little turtle legs from here where our neck is. We're gonna add one, follow me here, just like this, okay? And then we don't want any sharp. Notice how my tail is, is not a sharp. There's no point because in kawaii, you don't, you wanna avoid any sharp lines or any pointy lines because it's almost like if you think about pointy sharp lines, you're like, ouch, you know, something, pointing you don't want that so when we think about kawaii we want everything round we want everything circle and squishy and cute so we want to round the pointy part there and that's what we're going to do with our leg or hands also sea turtle hands is that sea turtle hands and so it's really just round it's chubby and cute it's <laughs> like that Oh, it's okay. All right, so we're gonna go add a little one here. This one will appear to be smaller because it's in the back. So we're just gonna bring it down. So it's shorter, just like that. Like this. Now this one, we're going to extend it so notice how when I'm drawing, I start just really um, one stroke at a time. So one by one, small, but we're going to follow the shape that we created here. Again, we're going to round out that part so we don't want any sharp lines. So just like that. And again, we're going to add another one inside and shorter. <laughs> so cute. I'm done. <laughs> You're so cute. Okay, now, if you're happy with all your drawings, you can now clean your sketches, make some adjustments, and then we're going to start coloring. I feel like this is all good. I'm going to clean up some of those sketches right there. Some parts in here are a bit messy just like that i feel like i want to bring down my mouth a little bit every time i erase it's shaking the whole it's the whole place my whole desk okay did i even bring it down so this is the part where we make adjustments in here. So I want to bring my eyes a little bit closer, just like that. All right. So what I was talking about with the Albert, uh, the Albert Durer watercolor marker, so you can use it as just a regular marker, um, or you can use it as a watercolors like what we're gonna do. Now, if you want like intense colors to get from the Albert Durer, you wanna use it as a marker directly, or you can build up your layers because watercolors work like that. You know, it, it works as kind of like, you have to let it dry, then add another layer, then to add details. It takes patience and sometimes I don't have that. <laughs> so if you wanna have the intensity, the colors, then you wanna use the markers directly. Now, it just depends on the paper that you're using. Some paper, um, some paper are easily stained. So you might have some issue with that. Uh, so you wanna um, test your paper first, just depends on the watercolor paper that you're using. Now I'm going to lighten my sketch in here because as much as I love the texture of the pencil, I really don't want too much of it, but I want it there as our guide. And so I am just using my kneadable eraser to just kind of like going over the sketch and it lightens the sketch for me. And I don't have to worry about eraser suds or anything like that. This is my favorite eraser. So I'm just over. Now we still have the perfect guide. Um, and then we have a little bit of texture from that pencil, and that will add a little bit of um, ver uh, visual interest. Okay, so I'm going to start with my May green, and I'm going to color in the head and the legs and the little bitty tail. We're going to color in 
the shell differently. We're going to use a cobalt green for that. And I'll get my round brush. Yikes. So I'm just adding a little bit of water, just like that. And then I'm just going to color. I'm not, you can just color in everything, even with the parts, with the blobs, because <laughs> we can darken that later on. I've actually pulled some um, metallic markers as well, because we can use that to kind of like add details. It's going to look so cute. Everything else except for the mouth, because I want that to be pink later on. So as you can see, I'm just coloring. I'm not even thinking about anything. It's just a wash color. So this is her first layer or underpainting. So we're just laying down colors in there and I'll do the same here for the legs and the little bitty tail. I am using a Faber-Castell water brush It is my favorite. It is a hit and miss though. Sometimes water brush, not just particularly this one, but water brush, because sometimes um, it's nice to have that flowing water. Um, but if you get one that does not have a great control, sometimes you'll end up with puddles. So just be careful, be mindful, but I never have that issue with Faber Castell until sometimes I accidentally press it and, and then because I have heavy hands so that's where the issue comes in it's not the brush but it's me it's not you it's me all right so we're gonna let it dry okay I'm gonna clean up my brush I'm gonna use a different color for <laughs> I'm gonna put that as there we're gonna use that later on now I'm gonna use the cobalt green and I'm going to use this one here. Again, you can use the marker directly like this. And then just kind of like, see, notice how your colors are more intense. So, but like what I was saying earlier, it just depends on the watercolor paper that you're using. Some watercolor paper stain and you cannot blend as easily as you would like. So I like using a palette like this just so I feel like I have better control uh, on the amount of pigments that I am using and I'm not worrying about staining or anything like that. I feel like I'm using too much water in here. And I don't have my heat gun. So if you are impatient like myself, you can use a heat tool or a blow dryer to kind of like speed up the drying process because that's the one that takes forever. So, and I share your frustration. <laughs> If I have it, I do have my heat gun. So we can use our heat tool to kind of like speed up the process. I'm still here. <laughs> All right. Just be careful. Don't go too close, especially if you're using like a really hot heat gun like this. It gets really, really hot. So be mindful of that. And you don't want to burn your paper also. And it's going to warp. So I kind of like do this to the paper. And then it avoids warping so much. All right, that helps. All right. So this part right here, I really want it darker. We can use a colored pencil for that, or we can use the marker directly. And so we'll have a different shade, even though we're using the same color, but we're gonna get a different value. It's darker. 
because it is without the water, right? Just like that over there, a heat gun. And then I'm gonna use the same color in here and we're going to add in the area where I had the polka dots. So our patterns. So again, this will give you a different value, a darker value now of the same color. We're using the same marker, but we get a darker, more intense color in here because we're using it directly. And so you get the pigments in there. Just like that. And I'm using the bullet tip because I feel like I have better control Sometimes the brush pen is a little tricky to use, even with myself. And I feel like I want to be precise with my lines. And the bullet tip really does help with that. You can do the circle first and then fill it in. If you did the same thing. Now, if you did like stripes or anything inside, you know, feel free to use whichever color that you would like. Just like that. That's so cute. So this color right here is cobalt green, um, one five six. I am tempted to use a black pit artist pen for the details, but I think I'm... I think not. I think I'm going to stick with my pencils. All right. So now that I have that, that's good. Now we want to add a little bit of depth with our turtle. For example, we want to add some contrast here and all that. And this is where the colored pencils are going to come in because you can really add texture. You can add the visual interest to your drawings by just mixing watercolors. So we're doing mixed media. We're mixing uh, watercolors with the colored pencils. You can actually, um, you could have used the colored pencils first to add your details if that would help you out. Um, because this is oil. It has oil um, based. Um, there's a little bit of wax in here, but it's oil. So it's going to um, be waterproof. You can use it. It's not going to bleed through. So you can use it first um, or you can use it to add details like what I'm going to use now. All right. Okay. So now I want to add a little bit of contrast. I'm going to use the same green, same light green. So it's the May green. It's the same color of the marker that I use today. So if you have, if you're not using the same colors today, if you can find um, a color pencils that is similar to what you're using, um, go grab that. If you don't have it, then you wanna use the same marker and add more details by just adding another layer to it. You know, so you can use the same marker and just kind of slowly build up the, um, the colors, the intensity by doing that. I'm gonna try doing that here in this part so you guys can see, but I'll be using my pencil from here on. But I just wanted to show you that you can add, build your intensity here of colors by adding the same color marker that you used as your underpainting, and then just build, slowly build layers. You can do that. All right, but this time I'm going to demonstrate and show you how I'm going to use a colored pencil to really bring this illustration to life. Now, since this is all dry because I use my heat gun, I can go in. I am not going to make this a clean drawing. I, I'm really looking for like a whimsical, a touch of whimsical and kawaii combined. Almost like um, if you are familiar with coloring 
not coloring books, but children's book. I love the texture. Um, I love flipping through children's book because the type of illustration um, the children's book have is something that I have, I'm very fond of. And it's something that I have fallen in love just this last couple of years. And I've been trying to kind of like emulate that in my art as well. So the way I'm building textures in here is I'm just using my colored pencil very, very lightly. Notice how I'm holding my colored pencil almost to the end because I feel like I, I'm going because I have heavy hands. And if I hold here, I feel like I'm putting in too much pressure. So I don't want to do that. To avoid that, I'm going to hold my pencil a little closely to the end, but not so much that I'm not going to lose control. This way, I still have control, but I really have a better management when it comes to the amount of pressure I'm using, applying. Now, notice how I'm not really going one, you know, one way, but I'm trying to play with the texture. I'm not making it super crazy where one goes in here. I'm still following it um, the same direction, but I'm doing it in small strokes. See, I'm building up the texture by just doing small stroke instead of just one big stroke to fill this whole image in. So I'm trying small, little at a time, just short strokes in here, just to build the intensity of colors and also building texture at the same time. So if you may say this is like um, kawaii slash coloring book type of illustration. Now I'm going to go pause in here, stop in here a little bit. I'm going to build some layers in here too. This one's a bit wet still, so I'm going to pause on that. Hold off just a little bit. So remember this part right here, because it's hidden underneath, so there's going to be cast a bit more shadow. So I'm going to make it dark, but we're going to slowly build it. We don't want to push too much of that um, pencil in there, just slightly. And this is where I feel like the polychromos are just the top of the line, the best when it comes to um, building building layers, slowly building layers, because you can keep adding color to add more intensity. And you can just keep adding in there, keep adding in there, as long as you don't burnish it. Burnish it, which means you're going to just apply pressure, you know, really pack in there. That means you're not going to have enough um, paper texture to keep building your layers by adding more layer after the other. So try not to go hard, just really light on your pressure. Now, I feel like I need to dry this a bit more, so... Oh, goodness. Am I back? Is that good? Okay. I'm, I think you I'm, are. Yes. Okay, good. Ba he looks like you were a baby just concentrating. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, the okay. May green um, is 170. Yes. 170. All right, good. I'm back. Okay. So we'll build more textures in there. All right. So now where the neck and the shell is connected, I want to build the colors in here. So I want more deeper color of shade in there. So I'm going to use a darker shade of green. Let me see. I want to build it slowly. So if you can find like a darker shade, um, Ooh, it's really thundering outside. I'm going to use the earth green yellowish. This one is color 168. Ooh, my eyes. 
But if you don't have another shade of green that is darker, just stick with the May green and just slowly build, okay? Slowly. All right, but we're lazy. I'm lazy, so I'm just going to add a darker shade in here, and we're just going to build up the colors in here. I'm just going to add here, especially where the neck and the shell connect. So this is all where I wanted to really add a dark in there. Like that. So we're almost like also adding in details now, like line art. You can use pencils to just kind of like really accentuate the lines that we've created earlier, the sketch, you know, that we started with. You kind of like just go over that with the pencil slowly so that you don't need to add any more like fine liner later on. So this is kind of like your line art already. So I'm going to do that, just kind of like slowly go over that sketch, I really love where this is heading. I'm loving the texture that I'm getting, the intensity of colors. Again, I am not applying a whole lot of pressure here because we're still going to add more colors. And we're still going to need some of that texture from the paper. So we don't want to burnish our pencils yet. We're just adding deeper shades. Now, if you can find another shade that is darker, that would be great. You guys know if you've been attending my classes, I like to have a light, a medium, and a dark shade when it comes to blending and adding my contrast and my shadows. So I'm just going to deepen the green here where that um, neck and the shell is there and over here as well. So we're just really gonna, hopefully we don't lose connection with the power. <laughs> We've been getting bad um, storms here in Houston. So notice I'm just going over it very lightly too, very lightly because we can blend this out later. And I really don't mind that texture. Usually if I want like a very smooth gradient, very smooth um, blend, I would use an, an alcohol marker. With alcohol markers, you can get the really clean, smooth blend. Now, if I want the children's book illustration, this is where I really want pencils because that is where my texture is coming from. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to my medium color, which is the earth green yellowish. So this is the lightest. I just want to show you real quick of how close the light color is to the medium, right? It's almost very similar for some reason. Okay, that's why <laughs> I was going to say this one seems lighter because it is lighter. So this is the May green. This is our earth green, earth green yellowish color. So just a medium shade. And then we have the... Um, chromium green opaque that's the darkest so i'm gonna go with my medium shade go back in there and just kind of like add another layer this is how i do that pretty gradient slowly building the colors and then now guess what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go in with my lightest with the may green and then just add another more layer in there Gonna go here too. This is the May green, the lightest shade that we've used. Could we have done it with just pencils right away? Yes, but um, it is a different look, a totally different look if you use a pencil right away rather than using a watercolor marker or watercolors underneath first. All right, so now we're gonna add details. I'm gonna move a little bit quicker here just so we can finish our drawing. Oh my goodness, time just flying by. Just gonna add in here. And then I'm gonna go in with my darkest. You guess right. Really adding here details now. So you can see the separation from one leg to the other right there. Now we're gonna add a bit more contrast in here. It's almost like the shell is gonna cast a bit of shadow. And then here as well. So again, you can use your medium shade and then go over the sketch. It's almost like adding details and line art already 
at the same time. Just like that. And this is what's going to give you that really whimsical look without the harsh look of the black liner. I mean, it's nice to have the black liner. It's more comic looking, you know, when you have that liner. It's just a different look. Does that make sense? Um, the chromium green is 174. So 170 is our lightest. The second one is 168 and then 174 for the darkest one. So I'm going to add in here almost like using it to add my line art. I'm going to use the darkest. Just go over real quick. All right, I'm good with that. So I'll do the same thing here. Just add my medium. I'm really going to make this one dark. As long as you pay attention to the amount of pressure you're applying. So try not to put in too much pressure so that you have enough space or enough time to build the texture. Because again, remember we're talking about, because this is a watercolor paper that gives me enough um, texture in that paper to work with. But if you lay down too much color right away, you're not going to have enough texture in there to really build up your colored pencils. So just be mindful of the amount of pressure. And plus, the this is a cold press, so it really has a lot of texture, and it does help when we want to build um, texture like that. Because naturally, our paper already has that texture. So we're just kind of like packing in the pigments in there. I'm going to go in with the darkest again. Then the same routine. We're going to go in with, I don't want any harsh line or sharp line in there, but sometimes I accidentally do it. I'm just going to go over this like that. And same thing here. Just going over the sketch. It is so lovely, though, just seeing the texture of the pencils. And that is why, even though I've applied the marker in there, the same marker, I'm going to use a pencil again to kind of like add texture. So I'm going to use the cobalt. I, I know I have the cobalt green. We can use the same color. Um, it, all, it does. It really does. So if you want to add the cobalt green color as well, kind of like what we use as a marker, the, that cobalt green is 156. But if you want to add, um, use a darker shade, you can use this one, which is the cobalt turquoise, which is number 153. And I think this is the one I'm going to use, All right? It almost, it really does almost look like 3D once you build that texture. But see how it takes, you know, it really does take a whole lot of patience though, because you want to do work slowly. Even with this one, I'm really not applying so much because I feel like the colors blend too much that you don't, I'm not seeing enough of the texture. I might have to use a darker shade, but we'll see, we'll play around with it. And I'm not applying any pressure. I'll definitely have to use a darker shade of blue in there. I promise you once you kind of like get yourself familiar with, you know, using kind of like doing mixed media like this, using watercolor and then using the pencil. I I can see you falling in love with this as well, with this style of artwork, because it really does change, um, change the visual. I mean, it really does. I'm gonna go in with the cobalt green, the same color, because I wanna have a texture, because it's too smooth. You see the, the difference from that when it's just a watercolor and then we have the pencil on top of the watercolor. You can really see the difference. I'm just going to go over. I'm using the same cobalt green, the same color of marker that we used. And I'm just going to do short strokes. And I'm going to intentionally kind of like 
play around with my stroke in here. Instead of a smooth, like, um, smooth um, strokes, I'm going to go play around. Some are like diagonal, some are like going across it, you know, just to build up this texture in here. And I'm really loving what I'm seeing right now in here. It looks so pretty. The textures are lovely, but it takes patience because if I do this like big, long strokes, it's the results are going to be different. It's going to be. So look how short the strokes are. And I'm just going some against it, some around, you know, this. I'm almost like following some parts of the polka dots. Let me see if I can zoom in a bit more so you guys can see more of the texture. Oh, nope, that's a bit. But can you guys see that? So I'm going around where the circles are. The green, the May green it would be the same number. So it would be the same 170. So because we're using um, the same number system with the Albert Durer, um, with the artist line of Faber-Castell, we have that. So that's why it's really nice to kind of like, if you invest in one brand, you know, it depends on what medium you're using. Um, sometimes the colors really, they use the same number system. So it's easy. For example, I love the May green. I know that's the green on top of my head. That's a 170. <laughs> it's one of my favorite colors. So I know that on top of my head. So I'm just going to go follow. So when we were young, we were taught to kind of like go one way, right? If we're going to go vertical, everything's just vertical. But when you get older and you become to be more creative, this is what we learn. Is This is how we build that texture, that yummy texture that we see in the artwork. And that's what makes a whole lot of difference. To just kind of like... super simple to a bit more interesting because your eyes are like playing around with all these yummy textures that we're building in here. Look at that. Oh, I love it. So like what I was saying, we can use a darker shade. Let's see if I can find a darker shade that you might want to write down. That is good for this one. This one's going to be good. Is it Helio turquoise 155. So this has to be, oops, this has to be darker. So I'm going to go over this one and see how dark. Yep, it's going to be darker. Oh, I love it. Because this one I want to be, this is 155. I think Helio or Helio. Oops, 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 oops. And this one I'm going to go around that circle right there oh you're most most welcome thank you so much for joining in have a wonderful rest of your evening all right so i'm just gonna go over this real quick and then we're gonna add our eyes and we're gonna add our blush and we're almost ready to go now like what i did with my outline in here you can use the same cobalt green and just kind of like go over our sketch so you can build your outline already or your line work instead of using some fine liner markers. So we can really just stick to this beautiful, kawaii, whimsical turtle. So just like that. I love it so much. Okay. So now for the eyes, we can use a black colored pencil if you want, you know, or like what I said, you can use the pit artist pens in there. I think I'm going to use just a pencil. This is the Indunfreen blue. Another color that I love is the indigo blue. Actually, it's a really deep shade of blue. I love using this Prussian blue is really good. This is the dark indigo. I love this color. So I'm just going to go over this. Notice how I'm holding my pencil close to the tip because I really have a better control 
and I can apply really pressure in here to pack down all the details for all the pigments in there. So I'm almost like burnishing. This is like burnishing, really packing down in there. Now for the mouth, I'm going to use the same thing, but this time, because I am unsure and I want to have clean lines, I'm going to go over it slow and steady, kind of like the turtle, just like that. And then I'm going to go follow the sketch. I'm going to use the same shade. This is the dark indigo and just use this to color this in. There we go. And now we're going to use that beige red. Like what I said, if you have like a peachy color, uh, you can use that. I'm going to use it like a watercolor, so I'm going to use it here. I'm just going to pick up the slightest, slightest amount. I want to make sure I don't have a whole lot of water in there. Just enough. Just to really get in there. So cute. Now for the details and the patterns that we've added earlier, you can definitely just go in here and add. I'm going to use the same, is it the chromium, the green chromium opaque? Get in here. Now we don't have to build texture in here. You can burnish in here, which means you can just apply a heavy pressure and just really lay down some pigments in there. So some of it I have lost. I don't even know. I can't even see the sketch anymore. <laughs> ah! Be mindful of this because it's still wet. All right. And I'm just going to get in here and just really apply some pressure. Pack in the colors like that. Just like that. This was another wonderful class. Thank you so much for sharing that. It really means the world to me that you guys, you know, are continuing to support us with by attending my classes. It means the world to me. Thank you all so much. And I, my only wish is that, you know, you are learning and enjoying at the same time, because I think sometimes we all forget that, that this is the reason why we're doing art is because you know, it brings us so much joy and it doesn't matter what we're doing, you know, um, but if we're doing anything creative at all, coloring, drawing, doodling, lettering, you know, scrapbooking, um, candle making, beads, <laughs> anything creative is always fun. And here with, you know, of course, Michaels and Faber-Castell, that's, that's the only hope that we have. Our dream is to really share knowledge and bring joy. So, I hope you enjoy this class. You know, I, this is almost done for me. My turtle is done. I can just add a little bit of like waters in here, like my favorite bubble style. And I just apply the marker just like that. And this is the last thing. And I'm going to say goodbye, but I hope you enjoy this class. I really did enjoy it. Uh, next month, I will only have two classes, so I hope you'll be able to join. Um, I'm taking a short break, but we'll be creating another fun illustration. We'll be creating like um, a cute kawaii whale for Father's Day. Um, just like that, we're going to be using Albert Durer markers as well. If you don't have it, a good um, marker to get as well from Faber-Castell are the Gold Faber Aqua Marker. So they are water soluble as well. So that's a good, um, good marker to get if, you know, because sometimes this is too expensive, but they're amazing. <laughs> so thank you all so much for joining in. I really do appreciate you. Connie, I think the next class is June. I'm not sure. Ilsa can help us with that. <laughs> I can't remember, but yes, thank you, Patricia. I will let Jason know. Thank you all so much for joining in. Um, it was so great. I had a wonderful time. Uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. I hope to see you again in the next class. As always, stay creative and stay happy. Thank you, everybody. Until the next one. Bye-bye.